Today I'm gonna to be breaking down the color grading tool in Adobe Lightroom Classic. If you're new here, my name is Hannah and I'm a travel and nature photographer. If you've been here before, thank you for watching another one of my videos and welcome back. This series is really dedicated towards making you become a better photo editor to help bring your creative vision and your photos to life. So without further ado, color grading. What is this tool in Adobe Lightroom? How does it work and what does it do to our photos? So it's really a way to create a mood within your photo or even enhance the image to another degree. And this is different than the HSL panel because in the HSL panel, you're manipulating the individual colors. So this allows you to manipulate the overall look and feel without necessarily touching those individual colors like you do in the hue sliders. Rather than altering the hue of a given color like we do when we color correct in the HSL panel. This just simply adds a color cast to those respective shadows, midtones, and highlights areas of your photos. Now, there are a lot of different ways that you can use the color grading tool to help enhance your photo. And one of the most common ways I see used, and honestly, one of the most common ways I use when I'm shooting out in daylight is adding warmth to my highlights and a cooler tone to my shadows. So adding more of a yellowy orange tone to my highlights and then adding a cooler bluey, teal, magenta-y sometimes tone to my shadows. And another way to use this tool stylistically is by adding complementary colors within the shadows, midtones, and highlights. And if you don't know, complementary colors sit on opposite ends of the color wheel. So some complementary color pairings are red and green, orange and blue, purple and yellow. So you can take say red and green and add red to your highlights and green to your shadows. And typically speaking, this creates a more pleasing image. That's enough of me talking, let's dive into Adobe Lightroom so that we can actually see this tool in action. So you will see here that we've got three color wheels open. So we have midtones, shadows, and highlights. You can also individually select them by shadows, midtones, and highlights over here. I just find that having them all open at once allows me to see what's happening in the color wheels and what's happening in the photo simultaneously. Now there's a single circle over here and that is the global color grading tool. So if you're wanting to add a specific specific color cast to the overall image, this is where you would do that. So if you're looking for a warmer image, rather than necessarily adjusting your white balance, I would recommend trying to adjust it here instead. Let's go back to all so we can see them all expanded. And I'm gonna just show you technically how to use all of these. So you go ahead and hover over any color wheel and you select the circle in the center and the further you move it from the center, the more intense that color becomes. You can see as they change around the color wheel, the colors are very intense. So once you find a color that you actually like, which I kind of like it in this area, you can move it further down closer to the center to make it less intense, but you can kind of start to see that that circle is shifting a little bit just because obviously I'm a human, I'm a little shaky and not always as precise with my movements on my little mouse pad. So if you're noticing that shaking and you're like, well, how do I get a specific hue or I find a hue that I like, how do I keep it the same? If you hit shift, that's gonna create this line. And once you find the color that you like, hit shift and you will be able to change the intensity of that by moving it closer to the center or further away without changing the actual hue that you first selected. And you'll also see these sliders down here. So this is just adjusting the luminance of whatever you're working in. So it's adjusting the luminance here of my midtones. And then if I move down to highlights and shadows where it's a little bit more obvious, if I move that up, it's just adjusting the brightness of those shadows and it can also darken them. Now that I've got those midtones sorted, I am gonna keep this slider value down at zero. I'm gonna go down to my shadows and my highlights. So I think I wanna add a little bit of a green tinge to my shadows here. Nothing too intense, really subtle again. And then I'd like to add a slight tinge of blue to those highlights as well. I'm gonna go ahead and scroll back up. I talked about this in a previous video, but I bounce a lot back and forth. Once I've made these basic adjustments, I will bounce back and forth to the basic adjustments 
panel and back down to color grading and HSL just to kind of balance out that photo because once you start making all of these adjustments as you move further down, you might be like, oh wait, it actually needs to be a little bit brighter to encapsulate the feeling or vibe that I'm going for with this photo. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm liking where we're at now with those few minor tweaks that I made and I will likely go back once I've color calibrated it in the next video in the series and make those final adjustments before signing off and making sure that this is good. There's a lot of different ways to editing your photos. I know that and this is just my process and how I use Adobe Lightroom Classic. So now that we've covered that disclaimer, <laughs> this is the blending and the balance. Great, what are they? The blending slider is going to allow us to manipulate how intense or how subtle the color shifts are that we made changes to within the color grading tool in Lightroom. So back in Lightroom, if you move it to the left, the crisper and more obvious those separations become within those tints. But then if you move it to the right, the more subtle they become. So the smoother those transitions are amongst all the color changes that you made within the color grading tool. So move the slider to the left, the crisper and more obvious those color distinctions become. And then if you move it to the right, the smoother and less obvious those color distinctions become. So next is the balance slider. And the balance slider pretty much controls the bias of the highlights or the shadows. So back in Lightroom, if I move this balance slider to the left, the more it's adding to the shadow tint. So I'm adding negative value and adding more of a shadow tint. I'll reset that. And if I move it to the right or add positive value here, the more it's adding to those highlight tints. Let's reset this balance slider and see where we really want it to fall. So I'm not liking it there. If I move it all the way to the left, it's really looking on that more filmy side. And then if I move it to the right, I am kind of liking these colors here all the way at 100. Let me see if I go up to my saturation slider up here in the basic corrections panel. And if I bump that down a little bit, let's see what that does. I'm really liking where this is at. I'm just gonna lift my shadows a bit more. There we go. Bump that vibrance down. Get a quick look here at a before and after. So this is after our color grading changes have been made and this is before. It is insane that this is the before. It's almost like I don't believe it. <laughs> But that is the power of color grading. And I think that they've replaced actually what used to be called split toning in Lightroom with color grading. Don't quote me on that, do your own research, but that's how I look at this tool in my mind. Um, and they honestly work very similarly. Anyways, you now know how to use color grading to bring your images to life in a whole new way and add your own stylistic look to your photos. There are a lot of different ways you can use the color grading tool and once you understand it, which I hope you do now, it becomes a lot easier to integrate into your editing process. Next time in the series, I will be coloring, coloring, I've said coloring a lot. I will be covering <laughs> color calibration and that is the last piece to this magical editing puzzle within Adobe Lightroom. If you're into this sort of thing, don't forget to subscribe. It means the world to me and I'm just stoked to be able to share this seven plus years of knowledge with you. So thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next one.